Modern day vehicles are so complicated these days with engines that put out newfound levels of performance and efficiencies with transmissions that shift quickly like double clutch trannies and as well as electrical systems which are so complicated they could literally fly you to the moon. If you see a couple previous videos I did, I talked about five vehicles you want to run away from because they have such terrible transmissions and I also talked about five vehicles which had terrible engines. Today let's talk about five cars which have such terrible electrics and are so overcomplicated that you're best just steering away unless you just want to live in a world of hurt. Let's get into it now. Life's too short to drive boring cars. So the first vehicle on our list that's extremely complex due to its electrical system is what we're looking at right here. Now it looks sharp and this is a very popular vehicle right now with that beautiful matte red finishing and clearly with this particular brand they've had their share of issues. With electrics they have had issues with rod bearings and quality control at the factory and construction of their engines but now they're trying to do away with all of that and go next level with their EV and it's the EV6 by Kia right there we'll notice it has some great styling details like that beautiful wheels and i love that piano gloss finishing down along the bottom there how about the front end beautiful headlights and i definitely will admit this is a good looking car and that's why these are very very popular look at that high gloss mirror beautiful right there too and this large panel on the roof definitely has a very unique look very nice touch right there with this spoiler that allows air to flow through and create a more aerodynamic effect. We have the shaved handles like you find on Jaguar, Range Rover, also somewhat you'd find on Tesla. The interior is absolutely very, very sharp, very new tech, new age, and feels very high level in terms of quality. But the unfortunate part already, and this is very, very early, is because these vehicles are driven 100% by electric modules, controls, wiring. There's literal to nothing in terms of mechanical movement in this vehicle other than the wheels, the bearings, and the final drive that turns everything. Everything else in there is electric, just like they are in a Tesla. And what does that mean? It's not an ICE, so that means you're done. There's no amount of fixing that you at home can possibly do to get this thing back on the road if it decides to fail. As a matter of fact, there is a current recall for this vehicle too. And the recall is identified as the parking lever. And so what it does is you put the vehicle in park, select the park, and it can actually electronically pop out and the vehicle can slightly roll away. Now allegedly there's been certain cases of this actually happening. Fortunately no major accidents or incidents as a result and Kia is also doing very well in terms of getting that turned around in short order. We're talking about a software change to make it all good but that's ultimately where the worry comes with owning some of these new complicated overly high-tech vehicles that we're finding right now in a lot of these EVs is there's nothing you can do. There's nothing you can check at home. It's literally at the mercy of the dealer and the latest software patch so great looking vehicle it has promise but i'd like to see this thing on the road for five years before i'm sold and there's a next car on the list that is very very complicated and the electrics in this vehicle will likely take it down to some level but it's pretty obvious what this is but let's take a walk around first clearly we're talking about a tesla look at the great tesla headlights for sure love that front nose on there definitely but it does look a little bit like a fish if i'm being honest how about those turbine wheels? But look at the red calipers. That means this is the performance version. Great looking side profile on this vehicle as we stroll back. And this one has the carbon fiber rear wing on it. Again, as mentioned, this is the performance version. Right here, it's a dual motor and it likely has a longer range. So this is a great car if you're into the EVs. This is literally what blazed the trail. What's the interior like on these vehicles? Beautiful white and black dual tone interior, white plastic dashboard, and you have the oversized control screen in the center. So clearly a lot of people are in love with these cars. It's a real love-hate type of situation. One thing you can't deny though, is the level of complexity, technology, electrics buried in these vehicles that you can't do anything with. If you think you're a mechanically inclined person, forget it. This is beyond you, likely. And these vehicles have certainly had their share of recalls from issues with, with the pedestrian warning and the brakes, the autopilot system, the radar detection, and a lot of the electrics on board have had issues with recalls throughout the different years. Now, one thing worth noting as well is, you know, we have quality control with panel gap issues. We have paint problems because some of the earlier cars built in California had to adhere to certain standards. Door handles that didn't always work consistently, they'd freeze up or they just wouldn't pop out entirely. You get water and fog inside the rear taillights. That rear glass panel is gorgeous, but that's known to inadvertently crack due to stress fractures inside there. 
suspension related issues on some earlier models and even bolts not done up from the factory allegedly of course now there was a gentleman actually on the internet which had a tesla model s that had to go on and on about some of the issues he had with his older s and pretty quick to emphasize the fact that he had condensation water essentially dripping onto the battery shorting them out causing a problem and then he had to tear into the front bumper to gain access to give it a temporary charge to go in and get enough going just to move the vehicle so it takes all kinds of different procedures and protocols just to make these things work. I even had one for a little while and I have to admit it was good until one day where I went inside, I opened the door and the screen in the middle did not open, did not illuminate. Normally it does, but it didn't. So I opened, closed the door, slammed it a few times, lock, unlock, went in and actually came back in. And all of a sudden, lo and behold, the Tesla logo started to light on the screen. Clearly it was going through some sort of electronic reboot. So what does that mean when the skies emit the electronic signals, which can literally cut power down to your vehicle? How's that for technology? How about the latest patch or software download that comes from the skies also that can change your heater operation? That actually happened last year too, where all of a sudden the heating controls were reduced and the vehicles did not properly heat up for people living in the north. That's tragic. So with all this modern day technology, these modern day EVs are great when they're working, but then sometimes things just don't work and then there's a problem. And us as the consumer generally have no way to manage it other than roll it into the dealership or have their little buggy show up on the driveway and fix it in their own way because literally these are hands off. And this next great vehicle is one that's preferred by rock stars, corn stars, as well as dealers. And what we have here is a Range Rover. Right here, definitely, we have a beautiful look. This car is very, very prominent and very much in your face, gorgeous. And you've got wonderful headlights and beautiful oversized wheels. Love that lower section on the rockers there and it's high gloss. And of course, if you look down there, you have this beautiful seam. This car is, SUV is very imposing. Gorgeous look here with Range Rover on the back. They've styled this very, very nicely now in this newer version. Of course, you've got this lower section here too, a nice little upgrade cosmetically. Gorgeous with little accents, nice overhang on top. Love this detailing over here over the windows. Mirrors, small, cute, but yet effective. And they're high gloss piano gloss black. And these things are equipped with some of Range Rover's best, highest output engines buried under the hood. Literally, you're sitting in the lap of luxury and you definitely feel like the king of England since the queen is long gone as the interior is second to none in the business. But really, we don't have to be driving just an EV electric vehicle to know that vehicles can be extremely complicated in the electrical perspective. And this is literally one of those great examples of that. This is pure ICE at its finest. However, it is very complex and its electrical system computes more numbers than the NASA space shuttle. But let's get into what some of the issues are here. First of all, let's look right here. So you've got a door handle there that's popped open right now. That's one of the issues. These get frozen, they jam up, and either they don't open or they don't close, and that's a really well-known problem. But look down here. Right there, you'll notice the vehicle sitting fairly low right now. Yes, it's got an adjustable air ride suspension on that. And just like many Range Rovers, including the Sport, it sits on that air suspension. The problem is when it fails. Just like Mercedes, they have failure modes and BMWs. I personally own an X535D. It had the airbags as well. Compressor, level switch, airbags. All those parts are just sitting there waiting to fail. And when they do, they're difficult to access. The dealers charge you exorbitant amount of money to actually fix. And the parts themselves are just hugely expensive why do you need fancy doors like that why do you need air ride suspension like that well this is literally one of the best most off-road capable vehicles on the market that's part of it but that's just the way it's always been with Range Rover these have also had issues with the electronic brake assembly why would you have an e electric brake if you don't need it what's wrong with the good old handle on that it's also direct injected that's one of the problems why would you need to put direct injected you're not rinsing off the intake valves anymore so you're causing carbon buildup why do you need that they say it's for fuel efficiency, but really, come on, let's who's fooling who? Differential on the rear end is a common problem. It's not vented properly, as well as basically engine leaks, coolant, oil, that's a plethora of issues there. Front suspension issues and the quality control, even though it looks top shelf, certainly leaves a lot to be desired. Parts that don't fit quite right, squeaks and rattles for a vehicle of this magnitude should never exist. But where a lot of manufacturers use a simple switch or a button to activate and it goes to one relay and one output and then it activates something. This, no, this has to go way beyond that. You need to activate a switch, goes into a module, which is a sub module, then needs to go through a bunch of calculations, then sends signal to another module, which then goes through some calculations 
calculations and sends it to yet another module. So no wonder things fail. And it's not just the complexity of the way they design it. It's also the fact that when a module or a switch breaks, it's big bucks. Why does it have to be so complicated? But Range Rover, Land Rover definitely takes the cake in complexity. And that's why I definitely can't recommend these if you like dollars in your pocket. And here's the next disaster on four wheels that you actually have that's overly complicated on the electrical side of things. Great, you like the big wheels? Absolutely. You wanna go off-roading? Absolutely, this is your animal. What we have here is a Jeep and it's a Rubicon. In other words, you have locking front differentials. That's why the Rubicon is next level. Here we have great new lights. How about those headlights there? Typical Jeep front end, looks stout. Very beefy front bumper right here. And how about the step guard there? It's great. Plastic there, plastic there. Lots of plastic on the rear bumper. And even the tail lights are quite simplistic with plastic handles there as well. You have this nice painted fender, but you also have this plastic edging. It's made for rough duty. What's the interior like? Basically looks like a Fisher Price toy all wrapped up into one. But that's not the problem with these vehicles. They're great for off-roading and actually why a lot of people like these, they actually hold their value. It still boggles my mind why that is, but people are buying these cars and they're paying top dollar for even used vehicles with significant miles on them. I think it has to do with the modern trends. The youthful buyer loves that sporting look, be able to take the roof off on a sunny day and just its overall versatility makes these cars very appealing. But it's the electrics that are literally a disaster. And why in fact is that? Why are the electrical systems so bad in these? I mean, we won't even talk about some of the other issues with the death wobble in the front and the leaking water getting into the cabin, the sloppy transmissions, surging and hunting and floppy idles. The engine's not the greatest either. Even though it's relatively efficient and powerful enough to move this Hulk down the road, there is a big problem with the electrics and that is essentially called the tip -em. That's the totally integrated power module. That's right, very similar to what we talked about with the Range Rover where they had to get all complicated. They had to take this specialty module, put it in the heart of the vehicle somewhere and then run all the inputs and outputs in and out of this module. And what does that affect? Well, when that tip -em fails, that could affect gauges, lights, signals. Basically, all your auxiliary electrical system can go out the window. Pardon the pun, because the windows can stop working as well. What's wrong with just using a good old-fashioned button, switch, a relay, and a motor? No. That's too complicated. This must have been Einstein and his brother put together the design for this. Sadly, the quality, they didn't pull out the German parts bin. They took it out of the Dodge parts bin instead from Mopar. And now you have a vehicle that's overly complicated, built with two by fours, sticks and rocks. Worst part is that tip them. You can find them rebuilt online, but you can pretty much expect to pay anywhere from $1,500 and higher if you want to replace that. And it's a pretty typical failure point. So even if you did it once, doesn't mean it's once and done. There's a good possibility you could do it once. Maybe in a few years, you do it again. Maybe a few years later, you do it again. It's one of those nagging issues. But if you see your RPM, your tax going weird, and your electric's not working as they should or a switch isn't working one day, that could be your tip -em. And that is a common issue, just got way too complicated for their own good. And the next issue has to do with this fine brand right here. And we're talking about BMW right there. But we're looking at the X1. So this here literally is the lowest common denominator in their SUV marketplace. It's got the least amount of electrical equipment on board and likely is going to be one of its more reliable models in the overall lineup just because of its lower level of complexity. But the more complicated version of BMW could be right there. And what we're looking at now, instead of the X1, we actually have an X5, which is clearly one of the more complex vehicles in BMW's lineup. This is truly state-of-the-art with air suspension, partially driven by relays and switches. That's going to have a potential failure point as well. We also have the large glass panel on top, which could potentially fail. There's a whole host of electrics on board here, which are, are literally up next on the T-Box for failure mode. Of course, we have these laser LEDs, couldn't stick with a regular light, had to go with the laser beam style. Auto fold away mirrors is also another potential failure point. Soft touch handles, which could fail, lots of electrics. Everything is power, windows, locks, and everything else in between. You have power windows, heated seats, navigation system, and there's all the safety elements that you could wrap up into one neat package like we're looking at right here. Now, BMW traditionally is more known for coolant leaks and some engine oil leaks. Some of their electrics are hit and miss, but as we scale up and we move up to the X5s and the X7s of the world, we're definitely going to introduce ourselves to a potential of electrical complexity overload. 
And with all of that said, you're going to want to check out that video, the worst engines, and you're definitely going to want to avoid them, as well as down there, the worst transmissions available on the market today. And I hope to help each and every one of you so I can prevent you from making some drastic mistakes that unfortunately many others have made. Hope to see each and every one of you on the next one. Catch you real soon. Bye-bye.